Technology can certainly help the research process, and that is it can help to take Nigerian research work from the traditional way it is today online so that it can be very accessible to people across the world. Now, today, that is not happening as such, but we'll take a look at what technology can do and what is being done in that space. With me is Iso Basi, who is the founder of academics.ng. Iso, welcome to Tech Trends. Thank you, Sierra. It's a pleasure to be here. All right, so let's look at the role of technology in research development. What's your take on that? Okay, well, I think technology um, is particularly important for getting research out there. And, um, uh, you know, Nigeria today, there's uh, far uh, greater access to the web than, um, than there was, say, five years ago. And I think that that creates great opportunities to get uh, high-quality Nigerian-focused research out there, whether it's on mobile devices or on the web. Um, and, you know, that's what we have uh, attempted to do with, uh, uh, with academics.ng. The challenge that a lot of researchers have is the fact that they actually have their um, research works somewhere in some university, and then somebody else in another university might probably do, be working on a similar research. So um, how can we ensure that there is this synergy and simplicity in the whole process? Okay, I mean, that's a very good point. There's a lot of, uh, I think there's a lot of duplication going on in, in, uh, in universities and in institutions, and that's because, from my experience, uh, most of those institutions operate as silos. Okay, so there isn't that much visibility for the research work that's going on there. Now, the key to solving that problem is to get the research out of those silos onto a platform where everybody can see them. So what we are doing is working with the universities to get the research out. Now, research amongst the, um, the lecturers and researchers in universities, they primarily publish their research in journals. So we're getting those journals and we're putting them up there. With journals, it's a bit easier because once you publish a paper in one journal, you can't publish it elsewhere. But with um, postgraduate thesis, dissertations, it becomes a bit more complicated. You know, it's, it's an unpublished work. Um, and so you have a lot of duplication going on in that space. So what we are looking to do is to, through our partnerships with the universities, get those postgraduate, uh, the abstracts of those dissertations up there so that someone sitting in JOS has visibility over what someone else is doing in, uh, in Calabar and can decide, rather than duplicate what someone else is doing, build up on some, what someone else has done. Okay, now, but it was of another challenge, and which is uh, intellectual property. So let's say um, I, I do my research and I put it up on the web, and somebody comes and copies my research and uses it elsewhere. How do I deal with that? Are there laws to protect me? Well, of course, there are laws to protect it. Um, I mean, on our platform, we are conscious of that fact. And, you know, like I said, when a paper is published in a journal, um, the owner of that work hands the copyright to the journal. So what we do is that we deal with the journal. We get that from the journal, and then we put it up there. In some cases, we share revenue with the journal. In other cases, it's just open access, so it's free. Um, with uh, And then we guard against... You know, we don't open our platform to, to the public. We work with institutions. So you as an individual researcher can't take your work and put it up there simply because we want to control quality. We want to be sure that we're dealing with the owner of the copyright. But in cases, I mean, after you put the work out there, nothing stops anybody from taking it and, um, and plagiarizing. You know? But there are laws to protect things like that. I, are you sure that those laws are actually functioning now, as you speak? Well, to the extent um, you know that those laws are applied and enforced, you know, I'm not 100% certain, but the laws do exist to guard against those things. Well, well the, the point is, you know, one of the things that we must do from the expert side is the fact that we must build trust from the, from at the user end. So the user has to believe that. Um, there are laws that will protect me if I come full techie, you know, because that, that's the, always the challenge. People always say that, um, and that's why the e-commerce sites, for example, they have to come up with pay on delivery just to build trust. Mm. So for, for people like you also, there are certain things that you can do as well to help build trust amongst your users. You know, but, but so let, let, let's look at how the entire process. So if, for instance, um, can I make money from this whole process? So I, I, I mean, um, I, I do my research and I bring it online. Is there a way that I can profit from that? Well, on our platform, like I said, we don't deal with individuals simply because 
you know, we have thousands of papers up on the platform and if we had to deal with thousands of users, there'd be all sorts of issues. So what we do is that we go after the journals where the researchers publish their papers. So we're dealing with, you know, we could have, <clears throat> at the moment we have uh, about 2,700 papers and uh, we're probably dealing with uh, under 20 organizations. So it's a lot easier for us. Um, you know, so what we do in some cases, the papers that are put up on the website are open access. Nobody makes any money from them because maybe the journals are funded by the federal government or they receive maybe World Bank funding or whatever. In some cases where they are not open access, we put them up on the web and people who are interested can buy them and then that revenue is shared with the owner of the copyright, which in, in like, you know, like I've explained, it's not the researcher, but the, the journal where the person has uh, published the research. So, you know, but having said that, I think it's important to point out that for most researchers, the focus is not on making money. It's actually on, uh, <laughs> it's actually on being cited, getting, knowledge out, getting there. knowledge out there, being recognized as an expert in a particular area. Mm. Okay, so um, in, in, your, in your own words, do you think that there are enough research to aid technology development in Nigeria as we speak? I think there's a lot of very valuable research um, that goes on in Nigeria. But because this research has just been there in the libraries of universities, in hard copies, it's very difficult for that research to connect to any form of development. Um, so I think there's valuable research that could help in whether it's government policy development, agriculture, healthcare, um, solid minerals, whatever it is. As far as technology is concerned, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not that certain about technology, <laughs> but you know, I think that um, it's evolving. Mm. It's evolving, and um, I think it's not going to be very long before we begin to get some good. Yeah, but, but, but let me ask you: Have you heard about any sort of um, fund? specifically for technology research development in Nigeria so today? Is there any kind of government support well, in I, that I regard? Haven't, I haven't heard of it, but how, how but important that's not to say that, that it, wouldn't exi it doesn't exist. Because I know that, um, I know TED Fund, you know, funds a lot of um, uh, research. I know that the executive secretary actually had a brief meeting with him a couple of weeks ago. He's very personally, very passionate about research. And I know that He's setting up, I think, research centers in, in uh, if not all the universities, most of them. So there's, there's, there's money going into research development in Nigeria. But I'm asking about tech research development. I, I, I honestly don't know about tech, <laughs> tech specifically. I know that's your area. <laughs> I, I, I'm not certain of tech, but I know there's a lot of research going on there. All right, your final word as we round up today's edition of the show. Nigerian institutions need to be a bit more willing to part with content. Um, uh, and it's all in the interest of of great knowledge. I think, there's, I think there's a lot of of interest in Nigerian research at the moment. Um, you know, like I said, with Nigeria being the... International um, interest? I think there is, because with uh, Nigeria being the largest, having the largest economy in Africa, the, the, the world is looking at Nigeria. Um, I think there's going to be, there has been, and I think there will be, continue to be uh, growth in foreign direct investment in Nigeria. And investors will make decisions based on knowledge. So the more knowledge, the more research that we have out there to back up uh, or, you know, um, investment decisions, the better it will be for Nigeria. So, um, you know, we, we, we think that organizations should open up a bit more and, um, you know, put that research out there because it's in their interest as well as uh, the interest of the country. Thank you so much for being on Tech Trends today. My pleasure, Chair. All right, you've heard from my guests. Uh, it's important that we take our research uh, work online and he has started the process. We hope that more will join and let's make Nigeria indeed the knowledge capital of Africa. We'll be right back. Welcome to our technique segment. Are they sent in this question and he's saying, why does my laptop not start up quickly in Windows 10? Well, Ade, this is likely a case of compatibility issues. It is possible that the install process was not completed or probably because your PC does not have the recommended resources that Windows 10 needs to operate well. What you should do, in my opinion, is to downgrade back to your previous OS and observe the speed. If the speed is better, then I suggest you simply wait until you can buy a new PC with Windows 10 as the default. This is where we draw the curtain on today's edition of the show. But as usual, the conversation continues online. You can watch the entire show on the channel's TV YouTube account or via my blog, techsmart.ng. 
For Tech Trends, I am Tukwemeka Obata.